All right, 2010, question two. Um, I think we might have already done this one. Uh, this was a, the rotation question, and actually not the worst rotation question. So starting off for part A, it wants us to do an FBD of the object while it's on this uh, little ramp. So the one thing that you do have to be careful about is, one, the fact that... Um, they do not want components, but the other thing is they want to actually know where the forces are acting. So gravity always acts from the center mass down. The normal force always acts from the surface and perpendicular. And friction, because of the fact that it's a contact force, it acts right at the edge. So th this is where all the forces are and how they're kind of acting. All right. Uh, part B, part B, it wants us to figure out the force due to friction acting on the ball as it rolls along the roof. Um, now, there's a few different ways to go about doing this. Uh, I think this was a homework question, so you guys should kind of understand the basics for it. So this is how I would start it off. First, you know, redrawing my FBD, FN, FF, and I'm going to break up, this is FG cosine theta, and this is FG sine theta. Now I know FN is going to equal to, let me get rid of that, FG, is going to equal mg cosine theta, which we're given as 30 degrees, but in the horizontal direction, it's not moving at a constant speed, it's accelerating, so I'm going to end up having mg sine theta minus ff equals ma, and let me just put some uh, substitutions, mg sine theta, oh wait, actually never mind. Um, let me just leave it as that. Alright, so from here you notice, well, I have one unknown and two unknowns. I don't know what FF is, and I don't know what the acceleration is. So, if I have two unknowns, I have to bring in a second equation. Since I did some of the forces as my first one, let me look at the torques. So, tau net equals I alpha, you know, because it's rotating. Um, now, the only force that's actually causing it to rotate is a frictional force. So, FF R, yeah, R equals I. alpha, which I'm going to actually replace as A over R. Alright, this R cancels out with one of those R's, this R cancels out with the other R, leaving me with FF equals two-fifths MA. Now the thing is, they want us to figure out what the frictional force is. So I'm going to actually rewrite this as A equals um, five-halves FF over M. Alright, I have this. Bring it and put it back into here. And I'm getting MG sine of 30 minus FF equals M times 5 halves FF over M. M drops well out with that M. This just becomes half mg equals ff plus 5 halves ff, which is 7 halves ff. Um, 
so it should end up being 5mg. M, they said, is 6, so it should be 5 times 6 times 10, which is... Uh, wait, oh, sorry. I completely did my math wrong. That's not supposed to be a five. That's supposed to be a seventh. I was looking at the wrong thing. So it's whatever 60 divided by seven is, which is 8.5. Uh, there were other ways to go about doing this, so I think um, I showed you guys there was like an energy way to do it. You can, um, yeah, uh, that was probably the only other way. But if you did it this way, uh, this whole question was worth five points. So realizing that the net force in the horizontal direction was the combination of a component of gravity and uh, the frictional forces. Um, you got one point for actually using the right component of, of the weight. Um, one point for realizing the relationship between alpha, uh, the angular acceleration, and the linear acceleration. Um, you got a point for basically using torque and using that in the uh, some of the forces of the equation, and you got one point for the correct answer. So, a lot of partial credit going around here. For part C, they want the linear speed of the object of the center of mass as the object reaches the bottom of the roof. So, this is the problem that we've done before. It's just conservation of energy. Potential goes into translational plus rotational mgh which is I'll just leave that as h for now one half m v squared plus one half i omega squared that's just m r squared Sorry, two fifths m r squared, and the omega is v over r squared. That r cancels out that r. Um, this m and this m and that m. There's an m in each term, so I could drop them all out. Um, this two with that half. So I end up being left with g h equals half v squared plus one-fifth V squared. Now, because of the fact that it says without slipping, that tells me that this V from the angular speed is the same as this V, the linear speed. So, I can combine them together to get uh, seven-tenths V squared. Um, solving for v, square root of 10 over 7 g h, which is just rad 100 h over 7. Now, we have to be careful what, what h is. They tell us that the length of the roof is 4 and that it's at an angle of 30. So to find the height, the vertical height, it's 4 sine of 30 degrees, which is 2. So this is just square root of 200 over 7, which is... Let me bring out my calculator. Five point three five meters per second. Alright, this one was three points, 
one point for realizing that you have to do conservation of energy. Uh, one point for using all three energies properly. And then one point for the correct answer. Uh, now there was an, another way that you could have done this. Since we found out what the frictional forces were, we could actually figure out what the acceleration is and then use kinematics to find that. But my personal opinion, I tend to like to use energy more. Okay, uh, part D. They say that there's a wagon at the bottom and they want, and it falls, lands, and sticks to the box. And they want us to figure out what is the speed of the wagon after the ball lands on it. Alright, so this is just a collision question. Now in order to do a collision question, we have to do, um, we have the mass of the ball. Let me change my thing around. So, initial momentum equals final. Um, let's say MV initial equals M plus M. Little m is my ball, big M is the cart, times the final velocity, V. So the final velocity is going to be equal to um, 6V0 over 6 plus 12, which is just 6 divided by 18, which is one-third of V0. So it's going to end up being a third of the final velocity of the, uh, oh, sorry, not final, the initial velocity of the ball as it, um, just before it hits. Well, if you look at the object, it's going to fall like this, hit into the cart, and the cart's going to go horizontally. So that means that we're only going to look at the horizontal speed of the, the ball right before it strikes. And the horizontal speed of the ball before it strikes is the same as the horizontal speed of the ball before it... Uh, when it reaches the bottom of the ramp. So, that speed that we got before, that 5.3 meters per second, that was going down at an angle of 30 degrees. So if I want to know what the horizontal speed is, I just have to multiply that by cosine of 30 degrees. So, 5.3 times cosine of 30 degrees means that my initial velocity in the x direction is 4.63. Alright, plugging that in, a third of 4.63. Final velocity ends up being 1.54 meters per second. And this was one point for momentum, one point for determining the horizontal speed of the cart before it leaves, and one point for setting up momentum properly. And then they also said that after everything's all said and done, you got one complete point for making sure that you have uh, units in the majority of the parts. So if you make sure that you got units everywhere, you got another point. So pretty, uh, pretty good view. Alright, uh, keep working on these problems. If you have any questions, let me know as soon as possible.